You're watching Chewing the Cud with Paris Munro and Mike Benyonro. Uh, I just had no idea how holes could be that dramatic. I was quite clear, never seen my ground profile. Maybe one for the weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got for us today, Mike? Well, this week I've got a story about the end of an evil regime. On screen now, you can see our contact info. It's at the Cud TV on social media. And that's where you can find us. You can also go on cud.tv for our website and on YouTube and podcast services. Just look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And his name saunter along the bottom of the screen. It's this week's Showbiz with Paris. <laughs> Heartstopper, you're a big fan, right? Yes, massive fan. Um, you might have noticed I'm sporting a T-shirt. It says, Queer was always here with a dinosaur on it. I love the dinosaurs kissing. They, I know, right? So cute. We've always had gay dinosaurs. We need to embrace yes. that more. Um, well, one of the cast members, Sebastian Croft, you know, the one who plays, like, the evil boyfriend mm. that really wants to come out, but he can't. Yeah, yeah the, the one that's, that's, that's in the closet. And... The closet, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, he actually teamed up with a charity um, and it was to basically support charities for um, homeless people and, and so many others as well. Um, he's donated and had so many other people donate £150,000 to this charity. Wow. Which is bloody marvellous. I, I love that. I, I like the T-shirt too. Yeah, it's quite cute. Um, I have to get myself one. Speaking of Heartstopper, mm -hmm. um, you might have seen on all the socials, you might have had your friends tell you about this, Kit Connor, now mm -hmm. he's only 18. Yes. And you might have seen people like, oh, and media outlets saying, oh, this is queer baiting, why are you doing this to us? Just come out. Right, yeah, yeah, because he played a, a bisexual character on TV, so they've said, well, you're queer baiting if you're not, not telling us the truth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well. I feel really, really bad for him, actually. He's had a really hard time. Um, he actually came off Twitter for a while because of this. Right, OK. Um, and he's only had the courage because he feels like he's been forced to, almost. We've got a tweet here if you want to have a look at it. Right. So this that's, is uh, this yeah. is uh, this is our our champion, our golden retriever energy, a.k.a. <laughs> me, Kit Connor. Um, Where did you get that from him, though? In it, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And this is what he tweeted. He tweeted, back for a minute, I'm by. Congrats for forcing an 18-year-old to out himself. I think some of you missed the point of the show. Bye. Ooh. Now, we all know what it's like to yeah. feel like we want to come out on our own terms. Mm -hmm. And when that's taken out of your hands, it's, it's horrible. It can be nerve-wracking, it can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, like, just wanting to come out on your own terms is hard enough, right? Yep. So, can you imagine this poor boy, 18, so young? Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, I'm thinking about when I was 18 and I came out as bi. Mm. And it's not what I wanted at all. But I thought that was a safer route because I'd be more accepted. And it's like, and I was outed. So I know exactly what it's like as an 18 year old to be outed as something. And it's like, he mm -hmm. might not even be 100% sure yet. Exactly. And, and I, feel, I feel like when I was, I mean, I'm 32 now. When I was 18, I was still trying to discover myself. Yeah. And I've only just found who I am now at 32. But I came out as bisexual when I first came out because I was scared to be labelled as lesbian back then. Because yeah. um, it sounded like I was still part of normality mm -hmm. um, and I would be judged less. Yeah. So, but being bisexual is absolutely valid. 100%. Um, it is part of the LGBTQ plus community and I don't think it gets enough recognition in the positive way that it deserves. Really. I was going to say enough recognition and protection. When I came out on the radio, I came out to the entire world and that you have to then realise there's going to be good with the bad. Mm -hmm. How do you think he's feeling? Well, he's come off Twitter again, hasn't he? Yeah. But do you he's, know what? He's had to hide from it all and that's that's horrible because I know he got a lot of love and a lot of care and a lot of people saying, we, we support you, this is hor horrific, whoever's done this, yeah? Yeah. Um, and I'm just sad that he's going to miss out on seeing that side of stuff as well. Yeah. Because he's felt the only way he can protect himself is to come off Twitter again. So many people have yeah. shown support, which is mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful. And this is what is so beautiful about the community. We're here for each other no matter what. Mm -hmm. And 100%. if one of us goes down, we all try and like scoop them up together yes. and lift them up. And that's what is absolutely wonderful about what we do. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's quite sour, quite sour yeah. news to, to hear but you know this kind of thing happens in the world um, and it's important to you know um, one educate yourself on bisexuality the LGBT mm -hmm. community and two actually 
be a good ally, be, be a good ally, and support them. Yes, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Can I take you to the jungle for a second? Now, are you taking me away on a nice holiday, or are you talking about that I was a celebrity? Get me a career show. I'm talking about the uh, the reality show where people get paid to just sit on their butts in the forest. Okay. Grabs. Yes, I'll go for that. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> I'm okay. up for being sat down doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, there has been um, a bit of a backlash, not only with this show, but also RuPaul's Drag Race, because they had uh, recently Boy George as a guest. Right. And as you can imagine, with previous, you know, things going on, um, it, it's, it's not been the most well-received. Okay. Um, so, yeah, there's there's quite a lot of, oh, why is he on it? What's he doing here? Why are you entertaining him? To be honest, I feel like maybe he just needs the money. and mm, he's Probably. Because he said that he's like, oh, well, I'm too rich for this show. I don't need the money. But maybe he actually does. Oh, he can't still be living off Come a Chameleon, can he? No. So, yeah, this is, this, is, uh, this is a tweet about him here saying, Boar George is trending again, so it's time to do my usual reminder that he is a convicted abuser and chained a sex worker to a radiator. You're welcome. Ostis Nahalba, the shape of things to come. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, we, you, you can't forget the history. Um, no. And I know people make mistakes and people mm -hmm. apologise for those mistakes and own up to it and people can change for the better. But I don't know. No. There's just something that doesn't sit quite. It feel it feels very much like we're, we're double standarding, like Yuchi. So yeah. when we had all those people being predatory and horrible towards children, and we're still allowed to be celebrities. Have we learned from that? Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, that. someone else has put here as well. Uh, Boy George yet again gets a platform while the man he kidnapped and violently assaulted has yet to be received an apology. Yeah. So even an apology hasn't been given yet. Yeah. So I, I'm not quite sure as to why there is a chance for him to, you know, do what he wants when he's done such wrong things. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm hoping that on the show he comes out and says, look, I was wrong, I'm sorry, I can't... Because he might not be able to contact the person directly. Yeah, that's might, very true. So he might be say, do his apology on the show. And I, I hope he does take the opportunity very early on mm. to you know, correct some of the things he's done, because he's not been very pleasant towards the trans community either. No, he has past. not. Um, <laughs> I think that's what's nice was going to be about that. Because <laughs> he was a... Absolutely. <laughs> Can't agree with you more there, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so I, I, I hope you're right. I hope mm -hmm. it's the case of, you know, at the start of the show, I know I'm here. I want to address something. Let me address the elephant in the room. Yeah. Let me turn a new page and, and start over. And I hope, I really hope that he actually does that. I hope he does too. Should we go on to something a bit more wholesome and a bit more cute and... Bubbly? Oh, we're doing my family photos, aren't we? We are Yay. not quite. Oh. Um, Disney, you like Disney, right? I love Disney. Okay, yeah. what's like your favourite Disney? What's your go-to Disney? Oh, it depends. It depends on mood. Grey's Anatomy is on Disney Plus, so that's technically Disney now. Okay, <laughs> that's a stretch. Ten plays. <laughs> Code um, red. So I like Aladdin. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> I like I like several lads in then. Um, <laughs> <Dying. that one. laughs> oh my god! Like a wizard sleep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You really are trying to kill me on the show, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so so Aladdin is one of them, but also mm -hmm. Moana. I like that. See, for me, it was yeah. always the Little Mermaid. That's that was my that was my gay awakening. I was gonna say yes. I'd... It wasn't Sebastian. It was actually Ariel. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the crabs didn't do it for me then. <laughs> See, I was... <laughs> um, Ursula, though. Big fan of Ursula the Sea Witch. Mm, okay. Would well, you know what? Speaking of Ursula, Ursula mm. was a, a bigger bodied lady. Yes. And bigger bodied lady than old ladies were, were always like a really like, oh, this is a villain. Mm -hmm. You know, this is terrible. And yeah. it was always painted in a bad way. However, I love that we are moving with the times now. There's a, a wonderful short that Disney have done, and it's called Reflect, which is really beautiful. It's an animation to feature a plus-size heroine in a central role. And just look at this beauty. Gorgeous. Just look at this beauty doing ballet mm -hmm. and just loving and owning her body. I think one thing that everybody struggles with is is self-love. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we get told so many things when we're even in, in adult life, like you must be this way, you must look this way, blah, 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 blah. And I just love 
the the Lizzo energy is like, yes, I love my body. I'm happy with my body. I don't care what you say. Mm -hmm. And this is what we need because this is one realistic. It represents the people because nobody is a stick thin model. No. In real life. Stick thin models aren't stick thin models, really. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think this is absolutely stunning. And it's just, you know, female led character. It's called Reflect. It's, it's, it's all about exploring the themes of body dysmorphia, which is something that is quite common as well. Mm. Um, image, self-esteem, and this is just to show people, like, yes, this is something that is here. We have to learn to, one, work with it, and and to just, it's, it's just that body positivity yep. at the end of the day, which is what I really love, mm -hmm. and I think that's what we need in life. Yeah, I'd just say, that, my favourite phrase is that body confidence isn't just for gym goers. Exactly. And that's what everybody needs. And that's the showbiz news. Thanks for that, Paris. A lot of, of warm and fuzzies and angers. I'm a bit of a mess with my emotions now. <laughs> Get the tissues. <laughs> More to come. <laughs> Back to holes again. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Here we go. Trauma, trauma. <laughs> You're welcome, but stick around as next. It's Mike in the Buzz. You're watching Chewing the Curd with me, Paris, and Mike. Now let's get ready to rumble as it's time for Mike with the Buzz. Oh, you're a Twitter user, aren't you? I am a twit. You're a twit? Yes. Okay, it's nice than what I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I do use Twitter, yeah. yes. Um, how do you feel about Elon? He's the one that has Tesla, right? Uh -huh. Right. So Richest man in the world. Right. So, oh, do you know what I heard as well? He um, he banned his his recent ex partner, mm -hmm. who's also the mother of his children, on Twitter. Yeah. Very bitter. Well, he's he's announced that they're going to start charging for certain Twitter things. Mm. One of which is the blue tick. Right. Yeah. A whole eight dollars a month. I'm not quite sure why he's wanting to charge eight pound or eight dollar a yeah. month for a tick. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, so this is, this has made me think then, because then you know all the celebrities that have got the blue ticks, right? Yeah. Does this mean that they're gonna the blue ticks are gonna drop off like one by one, and they'll have to pay money to keep that tick? Yes. Really? So they're gonna have to pay to keep the tick, um, and because Twitter loses money, right? Never made a profit, always loses money, um, and so he's saying, I've bought it, I want it to be profitable. Mm. And so the first way you can do it is I've got X number of people, I can get eight eight dollars a month off, kitchen. He's rolling in the money. He's just let go of like so many people from Twitter. As Over well. a thousand people in an email chain. Yes, might I add, which is the worst way to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Saying so um, you're no longer a Twitter employee. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> bye. Um, yeah, it's, it's basically said, not going to bother. If you want it, you have to mm. pay for it. Okay. okay. First of all, would you pay for it? I probably would. Is it because you want to be verified? Yeah. I, yeah. I do too. I've been really. on Twitter for a very long time, <laughs> um, and it's one of those things that I just sit there and go, "Well, I just I should get a blue tick." Yeah, you deserve it. I do deserve. So do you. Thank you. We, we both deserve a free blue tick. Yes. For life. Listen to this, Elon. Yes. Yeah. I know you're free watching. Tick. I know you're watching. <laughs> but yeah, that's on the back of the concerns that he might be allowing people that have been previously banned to come back. Oh. Like the the racist. What's it? Oh, yes, there's quite been a, quite a few people that are banned, including his ex. Mm -hmm. So that means the ex can return and be like, oh, That's hi, Elon. It's free speech. It's free speech. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, OK, um, if you go on Twitter and you look for, like, say, your favourite artist or whatever, mm -hmm. and you type their name, you always look for the one that's got the verified tick, right? Yep. Or, like, if you type in a popular name, you look for the verified tick. Mm -hmm. It's like if you feel like you can trust that. That's the actual one. I yeah. know that that's the person. That's that share I'm following. Yeah, it's the real share. It's the real share and her crazy. Exactly. All there. Not yeah. the drag version of share. The the share. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like so you know. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry, that's really. Oh. I have no hair to do it with. Never mind. It's like me doing it. <laughs> you can do it with your beard or your moustache. I can't. Oh. I've trimmed it too much. I can't. <laughs> um, just like I've got an itch. Um, but yeah, I. I there's questions about whether it's going to mean that the, the information on there is no longer trustable mm. because anyone can pay for a blue tick. I just wonder why he's bought Twitter if he knows that it's not really making profit and he likes money, right? Yeah, he likes money, but the thing is, he, 
It's like us going out and buying a, a, a Magnum. I fancy a Magnum today. I'll go out and buy a Magnum. Yeah. That's what he's done with Twitter. He's just decided, I'm going to buy Twitter. But then he tried to back out and Twitter went, oh, no, 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 you said you're going to buy us and you've signed a contract, you're buying us. Yeah. And the it... thing is, when you're signing up to stuff, you don't know what you're signing up for. So read all the terms. It's so important because you could literally sign your life away and be like, oh, I didn't realise. <laughs> and it could be like that in the terms, you know. It could be. So yeah, you just you never know. Elon Musk now owns your soul. That's true. I hope not. Oh. Well, you said you wanted a nasty man. <laughs> not, go, that, darling. not that kind of nasty. <laughs> <laughs> not in the same way he doesn't choke. Anyway, um, <laughs> have you ever been stung by a sting nettle? Yeah, in the wrong places as well. I was five. How did that happen? Okay, so don't tell anyone. Keep this to yourself, no, no. right? No one's watching. So. No, yeah, just keep this to yourself, yeah. Um, so I, I went to, I lived in Northampton and there's this park called Abington Park. It's quite big, lots of green grass, there's loads of swings and stuff. And then there's like a, a little woodlandy part area, mm -hmm. uh, loads of bushes and loads of stinging nettles. And um, I was really desperate for a wee. Okay. So I thought it'd be a really good idea to just put my legs on the tree trunk, put my hands behind me and just go for it in front of everyone. Okay. I was a very brave kid. Um, but then I fell into the stinging nettles. Okay. So that... That's not going to tickle. That, that will... <laughs> it was definitely something I will never forget. <laughs> not the best. It was actually the worst. Okay. It's horrible. Yes, yes, I can imagine. But yes, I have been stunned. Have you? Yes, <laughs> yes just on my leg. Oh, right. Just, you know, walking past, just, just getting, getting stroked by a stinging nettle. <laughs> um, it's a story about... Um, Daniel Elman Jones, good Welsh name there, um, who's 49, who has basically, he grows the world's most dangerous plant, which is a stinging nettle. And basically, it's been, it's driven people <laughs> to suicide. I'm, oh, God. I'm not <laughs> laughing at... I'm, OK, I'm not laughing at the, what you've just said. Uh -huh. I'm laughing at the fact that there's plants in a cage, in a bird cage. Yes. <laughs> because if you accidentally Why? touch it, it will sting you. Right? right, and it's that painful that it has caused people to commit suicide. That's how strong a venom it's got in its steam nettle. Oh no! Okay. Um, the it's it's been it's been yes. So what he's <laughs> tell what, me the dealer later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't want to come over as a loon. I'm trying yeah. to do this safely, but I'm interested in plants like this. Um, and basically, if one of the single hairs touches you. It will send a burning sensation, which intensifies over the next 20 to 30 minutes. Sounds like a UTI. And then continues for a few weeks to months. That little old plant. That little old plant. That tiny little hair. hair. That's it. Um, it leaves you unable to sleep because you, you can't deal with the pain. Um, you end up being hospitalised. Is this legal? It's legal for him to have. Is he having it as pets or like? He's just growing it to, to preserve it. It's quite a rare plant. Oh, okay. Now, right. is he, is he one of them that's the scientists that like to like create things and then will have like monsters and zombies and stuff? That's what I'm worried about. I, I'm thinking of you seen <laughs> Little Shop of Horrors. Ah, yeah. yes, very very. That's, much that's so. what we're doing. Um, Good. But it, it's reported that that one person shot themselves after accidentally using it as toilet paper. So someone had, was that in the Australian outback where it's native? I went, oh, I need to have a bit of a wipe. And the gentleman wiped. Oh. And it's a sensitive area anyway, but the, yeah. A pain that will send you crazy on your arm. To be fair, I've you. been in the situation where I've been outside. Not that situation, uh -huh. but like, you know, like, which sometimes you, you just need, need to pee and yeah. you just want to, you know, keep clean. Um... But I've never used a stinger nettle, oh my god. Yeah. So it got so bad that it he basically shot himself. It was that painful he just that had pain, to. It just went. I, I gotta go, cope, folks, it's too cope. painful. Shot himself. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry, that Oh god. I feel bad for laughing at you when you were saying about the <laughs> thing. My yeah. god. It, it's a dangerous place. And this is in Britain. This is This is in Britain, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's in Wales, so yeah. I'm not going there. No. No way. Um, I'm and out. If, if you've ever had something stinging up your arse, you can always share that with us. It's at The Could TV on our social media platforms. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Traumatised oh, now, aren't you? A little bit. OK. Um, well, I have some good news about the end of an evil regime. Oh, perfect. Okay. Let's end bad things. Let's end all bad things. Yes. And this comes in the form of uh, a one-inch evil. 
A one call? inch. A one inch evil. We're not size queens. No, but this right. isn't evil, it's one inch long. Right, I have kept it safely <laughs> in a tub. Oh. So what kind of evil do you think could be in here? <laughs> I know exactly which. It's the bounty. It's the bounty. Little chocolate evil. Yeah, Right. Dr. Evil in there. Exactly, right. No one likes them. They should be put in the bin. Thankfully, celebrations have agreed and have said that they're going to remove the bounty hmm. from some tubs. OK, I'm a it's little... It's a limited edition. I'm a little bit divided, just a little bit divided. OK, why are you divided? Right, so, as I, when I was a kid, uh -huh. I remember, you know, like, for Secret Santas, people would buy it for whatever kind of, like, birthday here, some chocolates, whatever. Yeah. And you share them out in class. There was always the bounty that was always left. Yes. And I had... I don't like to waste. OK. And I didn't like it, so I had to force myself to like it all these years. OK, so you force yourself to eat bounties? Yes. OK. It's not my go-to. No one's go-to. But I'll eat it because, you know, it's sad. Don't want to leave it in there. Um, <laughs> so but now that we have the chance to go, haha, no bounty today, it's less waste. It's less waste. And I'm quite happy about that. And I don't like bounty. I, I love coconuts. I like, I like coconut. I like the dark bounty. No, the dark bounty is a beauty to behold. Oh, that's in the red wrapper, isn't it? It's in the red wrapper, right? Okay. But they don't put the delicious one in there. Mm. They put the evil milk chocolate bounty in there. I think, yeah, there's some evil going on. Elon Musk might own it. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's blue. <laughs> it's blue, we're not saying. Um, yeah, a couple of people are divided, saying that they love the bounty for the reasons you were saying, that, you know, they could always guarantee their favourite chocolate. Yeah. Right, it's a bounty. Ooh, no one eats them. Um, I have been known to eat them out of spite. So I have work colleagues go, oh, I love a bounty. So I've gone through and eaten all the bounties before offering oh. them the chocolates. OK. Right, go on. Now what are you picking? Yeah. Wow. Screwed, You're so Rick. mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I love um, that. <laughs> but yeah, they said it's a limited edition. They're just going to try it, um, see if they sell... They can still buy the, the full tubs like I have here with a little bit of evil in them. Mm, are you no bounty or are you bounty? I... I it's, Everyone should be a no bounty. If, you, <laughs> if, you, if you're voting bounty, no, Get out. you're wrong. <laughs> um, but on that light-hearted and not at all way stop eating bounties, um, that's all from the buzz this week. Thank you, Mike, for that one-inch chocolate goodness. Stick around as coming up we have a game of the week. You're watching Chewing the Cuds and this week we are playing Gobby Game Show and this one is for the slurp bag that is Mike. Off you pop! <laughs> Go on then! <laughs> Keep myself together. Get your balls ready. Game of the Week. OK, so Mike has a bull gag in his mouth. He's going to tell us in his own way, um, describing certain films, and we have to guess what films they are. Mike, are you ready? Right, that, yeah, all right. <laughs> Let's go for the first one then. Okay, a spaceship. A spaceship. No ship. A blue ship. No. A blue tick. No. No ship. A gloop. I, Long, I, big. No. A what? I, uh, an ice man. An ice man? I know. I'm correct. Do it really slowly for me, Mike. An ice man. An iceberg? Well. Oh, I know where this is going. Bit. It's Titanic, isn't it? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I got it! Oh. <laughs> a blue person? A blue person's avatar! Ah. Yeah! Yes! Oh. <laughs> what? A what? A small baby. And he goes, ah. Ha ha. Right. Cool for that. He's had it. Oh, He dies. Hit the stars are out. His dad died. Oh. <laughs> okay, the Lion King. Ah. Okay, <laughs> this is really hard. I should have a shot for every time. No I'm kidding. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. 
You want a jumper? It's cold. Ooh. It is cold. It's cold. It, it's, it's, um, it's what? It's freezing. It's form. It's. It's. It's, 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 it's hot in here. Man's not hot. Oh, frozen! Da -da -da -da. Mr. Frozen. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> two. Frozen two. Okay. We got there. We got there eventually. <laughs> What? Just want you to carry on doing that because it's hilarious. Star Wars. Star Wars five. Star Wars three. Star Wars the. Five. Mm, 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 mm. The Return of the Jedi. Mm, the Return one. of Skywalker. The last one. The last one. Medonoli. No, the last one. The last one. I don't know what it's Jedi. called. The. Jedi. The Jedi. The last Return one. of the Jedi. The, the, last one. the Lost Jedi. The last one. Oh. The last Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my uh -huh. god, I need to educate myself on all this Star Wars stuff, clearly. Uh -huh. Are you ready? Little, 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 little. little film. Uh -huh. Little window. Uh -huh. Glory hole. Little. <laughs> little. <laughs> little uh -huh. What uh -huh. are you trying to tell me, Mike? Uh, little. Uh? Little. In a what? Little. Hair. No, no, no. Gandalf. Oh, no. Lord stars, of the Rings. The stars, the stars, what's coming? There? The stars are coming. Uh, what's that? What's coming? The, st that? the yellow stars. Yellow? Yes. Yellow. Yellow. Oh. Don't eat uh, yellow snow. Uh, uh. Yellow. <gasps> Minions! Uh, yes! Uh, okay. <laughs> right. Uh. Yes. Oh my goodness. What's this? Are you trying to rap? <laughs> M and M. You're shooting everywhere. <laughs> Go on, shoot again. Show me. Show me. Spider Man. <laughs> okay. Do I have to be specific on like specific on which one? Okay. Right. Cool. Um. Do you want some tissue, mate? You're dribbling there a little. <laughs> Dirty rice. Right, right. Oh, mm. oh, mm. um, Did you do that hand movement again? <laughs> what is that, mate? <laughs> Mr. Bean? What? I'm funny. Cabaret. Cabaret. Spider Man. Oh, Indiana Jones. No. Pocahontas. On a ship. On a ship. Oh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah? Okay, okay, good. <laughs> Ew, did you just <laughs> oh, oh, that was dirty. That was full on ASMR slurpage. <laughs> right. Oh I want to do like I I boy and a bear this is books. Eating a bear. Oh I'm fish on a bear. A what? Fishing on a bear. Pression of a impression of a bear. Fishing. Fishing with a bear. Fishing. Sitting on a bear. Fishing on a bear. Eating dogs. Eating with a bear, sitting. Eating dogs. Winnie the Pooh. Small little animals. Small little animals. Tiny animals. <laughs> Ants. Is it a bug's life? No. Eating. Eating. 
Eating and and <laughs> Okay, please tell me what are you eating? Well ants. Bananas? Ants. Ants. The thanks are ants. Jungle book! Yes! Yes, I got it! <laughs> My god! It's hard work. It labyrinths! No, I was looking for it hard work. Oh, you're just saying I'm hard work. All yeah. oh, right, I thought you were doing the labyrinth thing. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Right, um, this is this. No kissing. No kissing. No kissing. No, little sim. Little sim. Don't touch the butt. Don't touch the butt. Mhm. Mm Nemo. Yeah. Ne find a Nemo. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, cool. You put one thing in that book, I do it. Look, she's lower than her. Shut up. Um. <laughs> in English, is what? <laughs> uh, a slacker. A starfish. A slacker. Slacker, slacker. Sparkle. Uh huh. Let's go. Twilight. Because yes. <laughs> he's a glitter, isn't he? I knew it. <laughs> um. The horn. You got horns. What horns? Right. Someone's going to die if they don't have horns. Oh, they pick the finger. They touch the finger. Oh, they touch hands. They hold hands. Oh, they, the finger. they touch each other. Frick. They prick each other. Oh, the finger. They pr oh. You get pricked. On the finger. On the finger. On the finger. On the finger. Someone getting someone gets pricked on the finger, and they die. But I don't know what it is. Sleeping Beauty. No, wings and cut the wings off. What? What film are you watching, Mike? Maleficent. I had a dream. Oh, Maleficent. Maleficent. Oh well, okay, right, yes. I was like sort of there, but not. Okay. Well done. <laughs> uh, um, what guy? In the wheelchair. Bald guy in the where? Putting what in the what? In a wheelchair. In a wheelchair? Yeah. I think he Oh, X Men. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Telekinesis and all that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, this is what's happening between me, me and Mike here. Like, I know, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, Ah, The Hunger Games. <laughs> Bingo. Oh. Yes, after this quick break, it's that science that is. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's that part of the show where Mike explains why he's turned up with more bottles of booze than usual. It's that science, that is. That science, that is. Do you drink, Paris? I do. The occasional drinky poos, yes. I can smell quite a stench from this table, though. What are you doing to Take me? Take the word stench as a personal thing. Uh, <laughs> um, my children failed. I can't help it. Um, <laughs> so the reason is because um, when, when people are making alcohol, yeah, you, you always ferment the alcohol first. Yes, yeah, so you make wines and things. Mm -hmm. And then you can distill it and make it more alcoholic. And you can also add flavours in at that point as well. And what they're doing in the, the um, beverage industry is they then use these things called gravity meters. Right. to see how alcoholic the drinks are. Okay, so you can make an alcoholic drink, make it even more alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. And put a little measurement thing that measures the gravity. The, the lighter the liquid, so the less viscous it is. Oh. Yeah, the, the, the higher volume it is in alcohol. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to measure the, the um, level of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in front of you, you've got samples of all these different alcohols that have been distilled. And what we're going to do is basically, you're going to try and guess what each flavour is as well. 
Right. It's not just looking at how alcoholic they are, it's about what they what they could possibly have been distilled from. Okay. So, right, I have to guess what it's been distilled from. It does look like it could be pee. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I'm not it's going not, to lie. It's not been distilled from my urine that particular. <laughs> okay, well, good to know. Um, so, let's just start with number one. So, I won't touch it until you tell me. I, I, I will, I will we'll measure the alcohol level first. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so, we'll start off with this one here. Okay. And this one is um, 40% proof. 40% proof, which 40 means. Proof, it's... Which is about, you know, gin and vodka tend to be about 37. Okay. So, God, this is me going out, out now, just on one. So All right then. Let's like just have a, a little taste <laughs> or smell. Tell me what you think it is. Oh, God, that smells like regret. <laughs> oh, they all smell of smells... regret. Like... It's homebrew. They all smell of regret. That smells very like. Anacidi. Oh, I hope it's not Sambuca. It's not Sambuca, no. Um, it's actually Christmas gin. Oh. So this has got... Um, it's got oh, floaty oh. bits in it. It's got floaty right? bits in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, I sneezed while well Looks like I've been doctors, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's the smells of Christmas. So it's got mm. um, star anise in it. It's got... Um, all the things in it, Christmas. What's the what's the sticky cinnamon? C cinnamon. cinnamon apples. Cinnamon. It's got orange orange peel in there. Right, I'm not going to swallow. Okay, don't swallow. <laughs> Said that before. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, that tastes horrible. <laughs> Correct. It does taste Wait, horrible. Wait, you made this to drink this. <laughs> <laughs> If, if you just you should have some water by the side of you to, to help with the taste. That tastes like, you know, when you get like the really nasty percent drinks. Yeah. That like kill you off in the first shot. Yeah, it's 42%. Right. <laughs> but, that's number one. That's number one. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'll get number, get, uh, just, number two ready. <laughs> I can do this. This is a, a much lighter hue. Okay. Okay. This one. Oh, it really went in there, didn't it? It really went. This is actually quite a low alcohol one. Oh. Um, compared to the other one. This one is stuck. <laughs> That's my kind this of This is 35%. Oh, so the, the first one was 40. Yeah. And then this one is 30. 35. Okay, 35. Yeah. I feel like this is a bit more me. A bit more you. Okay. Yeah. Are you doing it as well, no. or is it just me? Just me? Because I, I I wouldn't spit out swallow and I've got to drive. Oh, okay. Right, so this is number two. Number two. What the hell is this? What do you think it was? Um, is it tequila? It's not tequila, no. <laughs> it tastes like it could be. What is it? Um, number three. I should, no, I number two. Number two. I'll just double check what number thing. Yeah. Um, that's uh, oh. rhubarb. That's rhubarb. That was rhubarb. Rhubarb what? Um, rhubarb wine. Wine? Yeah, so it's rhubarb wine that's then been distilled. Oh, I didn't know you could get rhubarb wine. I thought wine was only made from grapes. That's interesting. I like it. It's basically, never heard of fruit wine. Never. I suppose you can get loads of different types of beers as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Have you not watched Shit's Creek? No, I'm not that old. <laughs> it's your generation, not mine. <laughs> you get me back now. So, number three. <laughs> oh, oh God. I know this no, is going to be the wrong bad. one. That's the wrong one. That's the strong, strong one. That's, okay. that's what I want to test with. Okay. So, this one is 62%. 62% 62%. And this one um, contains everything that was grown in my own garden. Right, so so Mike grew this in his garden yeah. and is making me drinking it. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Wait, that smells kind of nice. It does, doesn't it? Wait, hang on. It's very floral and sweet. Yeah. Mm, okay, I'm just going to give this one a go. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God, it smells better than it tastes. There's so many words I could have just said. Wow. Like what? Words I can't even say. So that Ultimate. was rose. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> wow, okay, so th this is what exactly? Rose petal. Rose petal vodka. 
That's why it smells floral. Yeah, so it smells floral. And it smells nice. With, with, with roses, it it's like such it. a strong flavour. But if you don't dilute it, it does taste like garden clippings. Yeah, yeah. it does. It's minging, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, well done for growing your own petals and Thanks. doing, yeah. This one is 55%. I'm noticing it's getting stronger here, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> right, so this is four. Yeah. Right, okay. I'm just going to do the smell test first. Yeah, it sm smells quite nice. Oh no, I don't know. It smells like the last one. <laughs> it's it's going to be a smells better than it tastes, I think. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to suggest for number four, you just dip your finger in and dip it on your tongue rather than taste it, taste it. Oh really? Is it that bad? <laughs> oh my God, what evil is that? Do you know what? Are you trying to feed me some kind of like cleanser or something? It tastes like, that tastes like spirits, like you're gonna, like white spirits to take pee off. <laughs> that's because that's what white spirit is, it's just literally alcohol. Not that I've actually drank white no, spirits, because yeah. you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well you can, you just shouldn't. My um, goodness. We should like to know what that deli <laughs> delicious flavour was. I don't, I can't even put, I can't even put a flavour to that. Is this stinging nettle? It's... No. Chilli. This! This tastes nothing like chilli. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't it smells well. gorgeous. What chilli did you use, though? Um, I, 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 I may have used 100 grams of um, Cabernero chillies. Oh, OK. No, the super, super spicy ones. See, I like me some chilli. I like spice, so I don't, I don't mind the spice. That, it, it didn't get the same reaction as to eating a chilli, but, you know. No. You could, we could work with it, I guess. We could work with it. Start. <laughs> there we go. go. So this one's a nice light 50. Now, you said 50 before, and that wasn't light. I said 55 before. Oh, that was a 55, OK. 50. <laughs> OK, clearing the nostrils. Clearing the nostrils. Perfume. Is it perfume? Is it perfume? Oh god, it tastes like I've just swallowed perfume. <laughs> what is that? Mike, what the hell? What is that flame? <laughs> Honestly, what did you just feed me? <laughs> <laughs> That's um, actual a gin and tonic flavoured gin. So it's actually a whole bottle of tonic water and gin distilled into the flavour of gin and tonic. Yeah. Yeah. Right, don't try this at home. <laughs> no, no. Oh my God. No. Um, so the, Go all of these alcohols that I have distilled are, are still available from the four years ago in which I distilled them. Um, but you are... <laughs> you are kidding. <laughs> I am kidding, yeah, it was only two. Um, but that's science, that is. That science, that is. Well, thank you so much for the education. <laughs> well, that's almost the end of the show for now. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And, of course, on YouTube and podcast services, just search for Chewing The Could. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> so, so. <laughs>